What is going on everybody? Sorry for the lack of videos or content. Um, I had a lot of traveling to do for Christmas and everything. But we are back on schedule. And since you guys have last seen it, cleaned the deck. I started putting head studs in. Brand new lifters. I think you guys know about the oil pump and everything. New gaskets front and back. I've cleaned all the threads out. Has a little bit of oil in it. Actually, this is just sitting here because it's cracked. I ordered a new one. But I know I said I was going to send these heads out, the 317s that came on it. But I decided against it. And after a little research, I bought the 799 heads off of a newer half ton, I believe. From what I understand, they're the same as the 243s. Just the valves are different. They're the same size, but one's sodium filled or whatnot. I don't know. But these will give me just as much compression as these would have after they were milled. And these valves are the same size as what came on the truck. So this will be a pretty good bump in horsepower and everything for the factory head, and they were half the price. So I'm in the process of putting on the pack bracing valve springs. I got to see where's the number. Here we go. The 1219s, which are good up to 625 lift. They have the ones good for 600 lift, which my lift is six, or my cam has a 600 lift. I figured might as well get one that handles a little bit more. Maybe that's bad. Maybe it's cheap insurance because they were the same price, I believe. But either way, that's what I went with. So I'm going to swap these out. And then we're going to put them on. So it's actually starting to look like an engine again. Got the heads on. I don't know if I mentioned it before. I used the ARP head studs. Not the super crazy ones, but... I mean, they weren't cheap by any means, but they had better ones. But for a naturally aspirated engine, these were going to do just fine. Got all the pack or PAC, or if you say it, valve springs on. I think it's good to go. Got the lift plate on. I'm going to put the manifold on when it's in the truck. If uh, you ever plan on doing a swap with an OS, this is a good investment. This is like 50 or 60 bucks at Summit. Um, waiting on a couple parts, ordered new valve covers, like I said, a new timing cover, all new plugs, obviously. Everything's oiled up, ready to go. Alright, it's getting kind of late, so I'm going to wrap things up for tonight, but I'll be back tomorrow, or in a couple seconds. And we're back. So I put the intake manifold on. We're going to mock up the steam vent hoses. Now, I have this code. I'm sure a lot of people have had the code. What I'm talking about. The knock sensors are underneath of the intake manifold. And by design, if water gets in there, there's nowhere for it to go. Mine were rusted out. And this engine probably are on my truck now. I'm not worried about it in my truck because this is going in shortly. Um, the problem is, let's see if I still have them. Nope, they're mine. Factory, these engines come with a steel tube that's supposed to get steam out of the heads. It has provisions for it in the back, but the back ones just have block off plates. And what happens, like I just said, they leak and the coolant leaks down into here and gets stuck in those knock sensor holes and they rust out. So what I did was I bought the Truck Flow steam vent kit for LS engines. So with a whole bunch of fittings and the hose. It comes in black or stainless or silver, whatever. 
I went with this so you can see it a little better. So I'm going to cut them up, mock them up, and then I will show you guys where I'm going to route them. So this is what you'll end up with. There's a port that comes out here. You got to plumb that into your factory cooling somewhere. So what the, what the idea is, is it gets all the air pockets out of the cylinders, especially this number seven cylinder, I guess it tends to get hot because air gets there and <clears throat> the air doesn't cool very well at all. So this allows the air bubbles to come out. You can't see that at all. Hold it. So there it is. One thing I had to watch for is clearing the oil pressure sensor. Um, it, it comes with plenty of, of hose. I think I'm going to wait to do this one that goes to the front until it's actually in and the electrical is plugged in. Because I don't want to cut it and be too short or long or whatnot and have to buy more. So I got the front and the back hooked up and when it's in the truck I'll do this last one. But I highly recommend doing this no matter if your truck is stock or modified or you know however much performance you're looking to get out of it. This will prevent you from getting the code for your knock sensors again. So you'll stop wasting time and money, especially if you have to take this intake manifold all the way off to get to them. It doesn't help. They put foam underneath the intake manifold, I guess, to stop things from going in, but it kind of just traps things. So I'm not going to put the foam back in. I'm just going to let the air blow through. A little airflow never hurt. One thing I keep failing to mention is that after I'm done with the 6 liter swap into my pickup. The 5.3 is going to be going into my 98 Chevy truck that you guys haven't seen yet. I bought it from my brother about a year or so ago. It has a blown engine and I picked it up for pretty cheap. So once this is done, I'm going to put it in the 98 Chevy truck. I'll show you a couple pictures of it right now. So for that pickup, really all I plan on doing is swapping that engine into it. I will, you know, freshen it up a little bit. There's a couple things here and there. It needs the like, ball joints and whatnot, but I already have the parts to do it. He had bought everything to do it, didn't end up doing it. And so he gave it to me with the truck. Uh, my fiance is pretty crafty and she asked if she could line the doors, the, the, you know, like the upholstery on the doors with something I said sure the trucks green so I guess camo would look good so we'll do the doors the center console maybe the headliner I don't know we'll see but that's pr probably it and I'll sell it to pay for all this but if you would like to see that swap or this swap please subscribe like this video and I'll see you guys next time oh one quick little thing I thought of a little challenge for you guys. If this video gets 50 likes and I get 100 subscribers sometime during January, I'll buy the middle jump seat out of a 2007 or 8 to 13, I believe, Silverado. Um, I guess they fit into my truck and it's got the, you know, the normal console and the seat has a hidden compartment in it and it's got cup holders that are better than mine and everything. It looks good, so I want to do it. You guys help me out, I'll make it happen. Thanks. It's just too pretty not to put in a video.